a lovely chance to go for a walk in the park and the forest countryside of England. Now, early in 1066, Edward the Confessor dies, childless. So who's going to take over the crown of England? Well, Harold Hadrada in Norway decides he wants to. So he comes tiddly bopping across to the UK and fights Harold up at Stamford Bridge outside York. He loses and he dies and his eldest son flees to the Isle of Man. His progeny rule the Isle of Man for 200 years until Olaf the Black in 1266 fosters his son to the Sheriff of Skye. His son marries the daughter of the Sheriff of Skye, inherits the lands including Dunvegan Castle, the second oldest continually inhabited castle in Europe, and has two sons, Tormod and Torquil. And Tormod and Torquil were the sons of Leod, the MacLeods, and that's how we started. But let me go back 200 years ago, because what happened after the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Well, poor old Harold Godwinson, then the King of England, crowned after Edward the Confessor died, had to tiddly bop down because a bloody Frenchman decides he wants to invade England. If only the British left the European Union in 1066 and stopped the freedom of movement, then this place would not have happened. Maybe the Anglos and the Saxons would still have been in charge. And Harold lost largely because my great 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 grandfather, Harold Hadrade of Norway, fought him two weeks earlier at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. But let's now go and have a look at the battlefield of Hastings. So what were the rival claims for the throne of England? Apparently Edward the Confessor had promised the throne both to William and to Harold. The Pope backed William. Harold was backed by all the noblemen in England. So it was always destined to end in battle. Now William of Normandy was known as William the Bastard because he was an illegitimate son of the Duke of Normandy. And what he was hoping to do amongst other things here at the Battle of Hastings was take over the English crown and be known as William the Conqueror, a much better name than William the Bastard. A nice crisp morning in October 1066 as the mist was lifting off the ground. You had down the bottom of the hill here William and his army from France. And up the top of the hill near where the abbey is today you had the English. Somewhere between three and seven thousand men in each army. And both William and Harold were recognized by their people as great military leaders. Harold had just beaten Harold Hadrada at the Battle of Stamford Bridge near York, I should say. And William had just spent the last couple of weeks wandering around uh, Hastings, pillaging and burning, almost goading Harold to rush down from York to take on William's armies. And you would have thought strategically that Harold would have taken a little bit of a rest, recuperated grown his army and let William's supply lines grow thin. But no, he rushed down, assuming that he could surprise William in an attack. But William's forward scouts saw Harold coming, the surprise was ruined, and any advantage that Harold would have in surprise was lost. And the way the battle unfolded is the English were on the top of the hill up here and formed their shield wall. And the French attacked from down here up the hill. Fighting uphill is hard. Your arrows have a shorter range. Your cavalry can't really attack towards the shield wall with the speed that you need to break through. And men run at different speeds. So as the Normans got uphill, the English would open their shield wall and envelope a few at a time and killing them. In panic, a rumour spread through the Norman lines that William had been killed. So the Normans came back down the hill in retreat, running down here. To get over that rumour, William removed his helmet, sat on his horse and everyone could see it was not true. As I walk up this hill, in this old battlefield, I'm struck by a couple of things. One is how small the battlefield is by modern standards. 
World War II was fought all over Western Europe and this battlefield a little larger than the Melbourne cricket ground. The second thing that strikes me is walking up this steep hill, how difficult and imposing it would have seemed to be charging up wearing kilos and kilos of equipment and weapons confronted by what would seem like an impenetrable shield wall and wondering how you're going to get through it or whether today was the day you were going to meet your maker. And from up here where the English were looking way down the valley you get a very different perspective. From the Normans viewpoint down there looking up the hill you are confronted by this enormous challenge. But standing here, looking down, looking over the enemy coming up, you know you're in the superior tactical and strategic position. So why is it that the Normans won and the English lost? What was the critical element of the battle? After winning the Battle of Hastings, William the Conqueror needed to give penance to his Catholic God and built a huge abbey here. And the high altar of the abbey was where that cement plaque is in the ground, which tradition says is the place where Harold Godwinson, King of England, died. As the evening wore on and the battle fought, an arrow arched its way through the air as the Normans were finally breaking through the English shield wall. And as the Normans were cracking, this arrow came flying down and pierced Harold Godwinson in the eye and killing him there 950 odd years ago. There's a rich irony in that because two weeks earlier, Harold beat Harold Hedrada of Norway at the Battle of Stamford Bridge up near York when an arrow also pierced his eye. The abbey built in the 11th century here by William the Conqueror lasted for centuries, destroyed only when Henry VIII took out his revenge in the Reformation, wiping out all Catholic abbeys and all Catholic monasteries. So all that remains here now is a few of the old monastery buildings and the odd wall or two from the original 11th century church built by William the Conqueror. So what is a quiet British field? nondescript except for its history. Vacant of tourists bar for the Germans coming here and learning about the battle between the French and the English that ultimately set the future direction of Great Britain, which today, having just left Europe, is still ruled over by a German queen and her Greek prince. So what's the wash-up? of the Battle of Hastings when these guys, the French, won. Well, poor old Harold will go down in history as the last Anglo-Saxon king, possibly say the last English king of the English, because the French, the Europeans, then took over. But of course, Britain has finally got its revenge with Brexit. So Mitch, Battle of Hastings, what yep. do you think? Well, I think it was uh, interesting. I think uh, Harold killed your great-grandfather and then my great-grandfather killed Harold. Thanks, mate. So, multi-generational revenge for murder. All good. All good. Cheers.